You ain't free, boy. You got to do this. This what freedom look like. I shook up the world from this little old front seat of my truck that they taught you to speak with that feminine tongue, boy. And yeah, from the front seat of my truck, and just like when I was in Brunswick, Georgia, with no shoes on my feet, and just like I overcame those odds, <laughs> I overcome your ass. Excuse me, your butt. Because I put the kids thing on here. Because I'm going to clean this one up for you. Because like I said, this one is bigger than you and Jack. Y'all want to make it like I'm crazy. See, the title is, It's Okay to Be a Man. And see, this is proof positive. It's okay to be a man. I came here cussing, rooting, tooting, booting, bringing up my own sayings, being myself, being an individual. And there's so many men out there right now that just feel choked off and left behind because they gotta pretend so much. They gotta hide who they really are. They, they like raging bulls. Some of you dudes listen to me talk and because you ain't never had no mama's cooking or whatever your mama's cooking is telling you, woman, woman, woman. So you don't understand that a lion don't care about the opinion of sheep. Shout out Kevin Gates, cause that's true. When he put that in a song, I said, whoa. What lion walk around apologizing to everybody and asking their opinion? And then some of you men hear me speak and it makes your skin crawl. You wanna you look at your wife and say, uh-uh, he a bad man, bad man, toxic man. Listening to what they told you what a man is. Some of you wanna get aggressive. Oh, he talked this. No, I played by the rules of the game. And you talked about my mama's son. And I told you, you don't know what that meant to me. So you want to talk about something that means something to me? So I talked about something that meant something to you. That's why you don't talk with that effeminate tongue to a man, boy. It is okay to be a man. America don't want you to be a man. That's why they teaching kids, look at what boys are going through in schools. Boys are not even learning. Black boys are reading at a fourth grade reading level. And it ain't because the teachers are bad, it's because they're not even paying teachers a decent, decent enough wage. I'm an athlete. Why'd you pay me so much to entertain? What are you trying to distract the people from? If the kids are our next generation, why ain't the focus on their education? You would rather teach them about their gender or their identity before you teach them about coding. And which one has proven to make a child more successful? Look up the numbers for you, what happens when you teach a child coding and what they become. Why don't we have coding teachers in every school, in every class around America if this is what make these kids successful and these kids are our future? Still think I'm crazy? Please explain to me why these teachers are sitting these young boys down in chairs that got all this testosterone and, and you know they need to run around and move and do interactive learning, but you sit them in the chairs and then you punish them for wanting to get up especially the black boy that got a little more testosterone. You make this boy sit down all day you know what happens? See, I have a dog. And anybody that knows that have an animal, and not to say that little boy is a wild animal, but we have that we have that thing in us. And so if I don't take my dog out for a walk, you know what's gonna happen probably? If I don't get that energy out, if I don't run her, guarantee she's gonna chew the fuck out of something in that house. So my question is, excuse me, true the heck out of something in that house. Now, my question is, why would people who are way smarter than me take the time out and not look up the numbers of what's going on and say, this is how we make a change. We're going to pay teachers the same way that we pay athletes so they can ride around in Maseratis because kids need to do the wiggle wiggle. 
and they need to have fun while they learning. You need to make school fun. Don't Amazon or Google do the interactive uh, working so guys, and uh, men and women feel good about coming to work. But no, you want to pay teachers almost nothing and then you want to have the kids sitting down all day with all this testosterone. So you're training men not to be men from the beginning. That's why so many men don't know how to be men. That's why so many are brainwashed, buying shoes. Now y'all can say, why now? Why now, Kwame? Well, why would I talk while I'm getting paid by them? Remember, I just said, I'm not above the rules. They had their hand in my pocket. I was getting paid. Why would I talk and not be able to help mama so my mama can sprinkle her cooking on the golf course? That's why they not talking. That's why they not saying nothing. That's why they keep giving you these celebrities that they control. Yeah, mama's cooking. They're not giving you no real heroes that's out here in the ground. And any celebrity that talk like I'm talking, I keep getting people telling me, oh, pray for them, be okay for them, y'all watch out for them. So y'all been trained already too. Y'all know better. Ain't that better? Patrice O'Neal. R.I.P. So they got y'all trained too. They got all of us trained. When they started that following and like, now it's all about who we like. It's not about the conversation. You can mention certain people name. Hey, let me tell you what Candace Owens said. Oh, I don't like her. I don't even want to hear that. But let me tell you what she said. Oh, hell no. Excuse me. They don't even want to hear it. They trained you now. You in a simulation. They trained you not to like me. <laughs> and they went all around the world with Stephen A. Smith, their little yard dog. And all of the media, I'm talking about 10 years, 20 years, but even after I'm done playing, they ask players about me. And players, I don't blame them. They didn't understand what they was doing. And I'm so wrong, Stephen A. It's just about me. I'm just this little bus that's angry. It's just about me. Stephen A., what did you tell Westbrook? What did you tell Westbrook? That didn't you say, didn't you allegedly, cause I gotta watch what I say around y'all cause y'all watching me. That's why I'm in a garage and watching the background and everything I'm doing. Told you I'm gonna be away from you and moving different. <laughs> My mama's cooking, boy. <laughs> so, and, and you YouTubers that streaming me, uh, please put my, cause I'm allowing you to do it for now. And then I'm gonna tell you when not to do it. And I'm only gonna let a certain few YouTubers that was messing with me before. Ticket TV, uh, Jada Black, uh, 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 I'm missing one guy. And he my Carcino, I'm going to mess with those dudes. And Tommy, you definitely can do it. You already know that. But uh, everybody else, y'all going to stop streaming me and getting all these views. And y'all not even putting my bus life even in the description box. So that's a little rude. But that's okay. But like I said, I want to get the message out first. But if I'm so wrong, Stephen A., why did you tell Westbrook to retire? Allegedly, I think. Maybe. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just saying something. My opinion. I'm crazy, so I'm just saying it. But I think you told Westbrook to retire. And then I think, allegedly, you told Westbrook that uh, when he started playing well, you didn't even congratulate the Black Lion. You said he should thank you. A dude that never played the game at the same level, he should now bow down to you and thank you. Boy, y'all did a good job destroying masculinity and flipping it upside down and giving us a loud mouth, effeminate male that don't do nothing but talk and bass and, and, and take away the manhood of stronger men that in the real world we can just. And I'm not promoting violence, kids. Okay, that ain't enough. Uh, Stephen A., what did you tell Andrew Wiggins? You're not tearing down black men? 
Y'all not, y'all not, that's not what y'all doing. I'm just an angry, crazy dude, right? So I think allegedly, I hope, I don't know. You, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm crazy. I snapped. Um, but I think I heard something like you said, trade this young man, mama's son for a box. You talking about this man, mama's son like that. You said trade this man for, for a box in front of those white folks and you acting like some white folks and I don't want white folks as a whole to get offended by this because Miss Perry which is a white woman and her husband Mr. Perry helped me out so I will never talk about it as an all but we all know y'all understand when we talking it's never an all but Stephen A you said that in front of these white folks about a young lion that is way more successful than you Boy, you jumping and bucket dancing good, boy. How much they pay you, boy? I bet you they triple your salary every time you emasculate a black male that's strong. And you do it for the world to see. It's like a gladiator versus a you. And somehow you always win with no powers except the people that's protecting you. Still think I'm lying, huh? See, Jack, Becky with the good hair, if y'all was smart and y'all was real like y'all said y'all was, y'all wouldn't be disrespecting black folks like that. See, you said uh, Matt Barnes, Becky, you said you don't disrespect black men. You empower, you uplift. That's what your station is about. So you think my son felt empowered Hearing you say that his black daddy that took care of his mama since he was 14 years old, that overcame not having shoes on his feet, that came from a homeless shelter in a free lunch program, that overcame more stuff than you. I can tell the way you talk, boy. You went to a private school. So I overcame and persevered more than you. And you think you got the right to speak on me? You think that was uplifting for my son to hear you say <laughs> Exclude him from the trade. That was a one player trade. That's what you say your organization does is uplift black males. I ain't never seen you uplift, uplift nobody but Jeremy Lynn. Yeah, y'all, he y'all made him look real good. He was able to explain his story, tell his side. But every time you mentioned old Kwame Brown, there was some snickering and kickering involved. Wonder why that is. Still think I'm crazy? Ray Rice allegedly got spat on by his wife. Allegedly, he hit his wife, even though it's on camera. I'm still saying allegedly, because y'all playing. He allegedly hit his wife. And y'all made that man apologize to every black woman in America. You made him talk about his mama and how his mama raised him. You made him apologize to a wife and let her put his foot on his neck, even though she was allegedly a little disrespectful herself. See? But then, when the white guy, see, the crazy thing is, is I could barely remember the guy's name. That's how much you ran his story. Played for the Seahawks. Allegedly stumped that black woman. Allegedly. I saw pictures, allegedly. Face beat up. Didn't really hear much about it after a couple days. He didn't have to go apologize to all black women. He didn't have to go on a, a campaign uh, letting that woman kick his drawers in his ass and marry him so she can get some of his money. No, that ain't happening. But y'all made sure Ray Rice know his place. And you wonder why so much violence and aggression in the black community. Y'all kicking these black boys' draws in their buttocks. Not letting them be men. We already don't have examples of fathers because you guys keep pumping single parent households. And with all this data, with all this science, and with all this proof that it's not offensive to a woman 
to say, hey, look at this number. And I, I qualify to talk about it because I grew up in it. And the numbers, I have five out of eight of my brothers go to prison. I qualify to tell my family story, no matter if it hurts your feelings. And we can, we've been caring about feelings for so long that we won't tell the truth. That everything that we pumping and pushing to these kids is nothing that's going to help them be smarter, be successful, and be ready for this future. Seems like you teaching them everything in reverse to make them angry and tear down everything in the streets. To not have them the ability to critical think because you're captivating their mind with a game all day. In Fortnite, that was genius, allegedly. Whoever made the game, maybe not Fortnite, I think, allegedly. Whatever, whoever made the game, Fortnite. Y'all are allegedly geniuses because there's no pause button on Fortnite. So now, automatically, when a father corrects a son and stop him from that game because he can't pause it and get back to it, now he pissed off because he was in the chat and he was kicking butt. Now he mad at mama. Now he ripping TVs off wall because he in the chat. And there's no pause button. So he can pause so he can take care of responsibilities and, and business outside and listen to his mama's cooking. So now these little boys strengthen with mama and daddy. They don't even want to come out the room. They don't even want to be around their family because they know they're going to stop them from playing that game. And it ain't no pause button. So allegedly, that's genius. See, Jack, see, Becky, if y'all was connected to something, you would have knew better. See, I don't know why they sent Stephen A. at me, but I kind of do now. I kind of do now. Y'all been held away from mama's cooking for so long. And all of y'all need to get recentered and refocused back to your mama's cooking. Sometimes y'all mama warn y'all before trouble happened. My mama used to have bad nightmares and wake up and tell my brothers, don't go over here, don't go over there. And every time they ain't listen, they end up in the cuffs. It's time out for teaching these boys that all they got is basketball and to entertain when all the entertainers are controlled. We are the like and follow society. Somebody actually joked on a third eye Geechee about not having likes and followers. They actually thought that was going to hurt my feelings. I was taken aback that they thought that. I'm like, man, what the fuck wrong with you? I don't care about that. I've been like this. They have taught y'all to not think. They've taught you to only listen to the people you like. So that's easy to control you. Now, the, beehi the beehive of strength with anybody over here, whoever's the strongest posse, whoever got the most followers, that's who they give the playbook to. No matter if it makes sense, they know kids don't need sense no more. They ain't been talking to their mamas. Mama got to go to work. They been telling mama they don't need no man. So mama got to be mama and the man. And what those kids are not getting is mama's cooking. They have made you bash women that sit there and nurture their kids and give them mama's cooking. But that's the thing we need. I'm a product of mama's cooking. No matter what Charlemagne tried to do and dox me for whatever my father did. Because my mama didn't even tell me that, sir. Because she knew. Them mamas know. Them good mamas, when they sprinkling that cooking in that season, they know what to put in the pot. They don't need your help, sir. So shame on you. Especially with your checkered path. you just proven that you paid for it. To go along, get along, game. Y'all controlling the masses by these likes and these followers. Y'all need to go unfollow every celebrity and follow your mama's cooking. Follow somebody in your family that's the example, that's doing it successful, that's doing it the right way. 
And if you got these women in your life, see the thing that y'all don't understand, the reason why they're attacking y'all young boys and kicking our drawers and our, our butt tucks so much because they want our women to take over. If you can look at it, our women are the most strong, um, uh, masculine jokers in the world. A woman can literally punch you in the face right now and you do anything short of turning to run, somehow you're a bad toxic guy. But they overlook the same behavior that they're claiming they're trying to make the world eradicate, which is bad behavior. See, they taught y'all to join these groups and be a part of something. The more group and the more letters and numbers in front of the group, the more out of control and your behavior can change. Still think I'm crazy? Watch the behaviors of some of these people that join these groups. It is the worst behavior you can ever see. See, I don't follow the group. I don't follow none of that. I watch what work and I watch behavior. And what I'm seeing right now is people are joining these big groups and getting protection because they know they taught people not how to think, especially not go against somebody they like. Because I like you, I can't disagree with you. Otherwise, we can't be no friends no more. You, you understand something against what I said? It's not the way the world works. When I went to St. Simons Island Elementary and Glen Academy High School, because, you know, I stopped right there. But when I was in those two schools, I had beautiful teachers. Miss Perry was one of them. And, and those who I miss, I apologize. But they taught me that people have a right to say whatever they want to say. But you have a right to challenge what they say. Not quiet them down, not get offended, not yell and shout them down. You just ask them the who, the why, the what, and the when. And now you guys start a dialogue. Some fights are starting because they took away critical thinking. Now it's all about trying me, disrespecting me. See, when you have a race of people and you have all these people that don't know how to critically think and don't know how to talk it out, when men don't do no talking, because a lot of times and where we from in our community, we don't do no talking. And that's why we do a lot of, you know what? Because when men don't do no talking, then violence ensues. So it's okay to talk. It's healthy to talk. It's not weak to talk. We make it look like that's weak. See, you thought that was weak, Matt and Jack. You just didn't know how much manly that was to try to show you that I have a brand, that I have a child, and you being showboating, you lost your sight of your purpose. Because they've torn down so many black men right in front of you that you so used to seeing it that you okay with it. But most places, that's where I go. People will tell you, if they ask you about me, they'll, they'll see you around, you even see me dancing and having a great time shaking it up, you know, doing the big, you know, getting these shoulders working, you know, that's what I do. Or I'm sitting there quiet and I'm people watching. And sometimes I see the craziest stuff. And I'm just watching, observing, feeling the people so I can know what's going on. And what's going on is absolutely crazy. And the only way we're going to change that is we're going to have to stop all this yelling and shouting and running up and down the street. We can fix this with simple fixes. Organizations are raising 90 and 80 and hundreds of millions of dollars in the sake of talking about helping the black community. But they won't even give you the information on the Opportunity Zones. Y'all giving out 80, 90 million dollars? There should be uh, coding centers in every neighborhood. There shouldn't be no parks without covering and courts and lights and all this because the kids are our future, right? We keep worrying about adults. We keep worrying about grown-ups and people who made poor choices in their life that don't want to look at the numbers and deal with their consequences. See, y'all thought I was a game. When I told you about my mama's cooking and my mama's seasoning, I told you how good the food was. And she put it in me. And I was trying to give it to y'all. But instead, 
they gave y'all Stephen A. And every reporter that was talking about my mama's cooking. And now y'all get to judge it and see for yourselves how it tastes to you. Y'all have a blessed day.